Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Monday and thank you so much for coming in to watch this video. We're going to talk about a couple of things here. Obviously, what's going on with Bitcoin miners, Bitcoin today is down a little bit, not much, hovering around the 67,000 mark. Uh, but we'll also take a look at Bit Digital. They provided their financial results for fiscal year 2023. Q4 numbers we have in there as well. So we'll look at what's going on there. And we'll also take a look at the latest short interest that we do have on the miners, looking at the last basically month of data that we do have on them. And then we'll call it a day. So it should be pretty easy today. Okay. But as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. I'm investing in following coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. And then any corrections will be posted to Discord, which is through Patreon, YouTube, community posts, and Twitter as well. Um, so you guys will be made aware of when that happens. Uh, but let's take a look at what's going on here with Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin, as you can see here, is right around 67868 It's down a little bit from where it was um, basically where it closed yesterday. Uh, but we still have a little bit of time to go left, about 17 minutes or so on the day. And we'll see where things go. I mean, right now we obviously are taking a little bit of a relief rally, which I think is good. RSI has come down on the daily to about, what is it at right now, about 58 or something like that. So that's fine there. And we still have some of the miners here that are doing actually pretty good. Uh, it was a mixed day on the miners. Some were down, some were up. Uh, but we did see like Cypher was up 11.9% today which was up pretty big. DMG was up 5.5%. Hot was up 3.3%. Then a lot of them were just like, like in uh, single, not even single digits increases. Uh, but then the rest were kind of down. BitTier was down quite a bit, 7.5%. Uh, surprise on that, even though they provided some news that they got certified for their um, AI hardware through NVIDIA. But yeah, it's kind of the way we're looking at right now. So we still have, like we saw here just recently, I showed it to you guys on this screen here. We have basically 30 days left to go before the having event. We'll see how things all progress going forward. It's going to be a choppy ride until then, I think, and then maybe a little bit afterwards as well before we start going back up into all-time highs again. Uh, but going back here, let's see what's going on uh, on the other side of things for Bitcoin. If we look at the Bitcoin network here, the total hash rate on the 30-day average, we are now averaging about 583 exahash on that one. And if we look at the one-day average, we can see that here that we got a new high here recently, which I didn't notice until now, we hit 710 exahash uh, for a peak here. So that's our recent new all time high on it. And the important part on this tracking this is because obviously, as the miners increase their hash rate, the network hash rate increases its hash rate. So if the miners are not keeping up with the network hash rate, uh, they are going to be obviously generating less and less Bitcoin because of it. So something to be mindful of there and always good to keep an eye on it. And then looking at the actual transaction fees here for the last uh, three months here we can see that they've been coming down here they're not as high as they have been in obviously in january december or in like may of last year uh, which is obviously not a good sign for the miners because they usually do benefit from that quite a bit but we'll keep it on and see as things progress and then we get into a bull run and see if those will start popping back up which they have in the past um, so i would expect those to go up as well uh, but nonetheless with bitcoin being up so high the miners are actually making pretty good money right now so that's it on those things really quick. And let's get into BitDigital here. So BitDigital Inc. announces fiscal year 2023 financial results. And these are obviously not including any of the AI side of the business that they have yet. We won't see those results until possibly Q1. Well, I'm pretty sure we'll see those at the Q1 results. So uh, we basically have another probably six weeks or so before we see those, six to eight weeks before we see those results and see what the profit margins is um, for them on the AI side of things. Okay, uh, but looking down here, I'm not going to go through all of these. Just I highlighted a couple of things here. Uh, the company paid approximately five cents per kilowatt hour to its hosting partners for electricity consumed during the fiscal year. So that's actually pretty good when it comes to hosting. The average fleet efficiency for the active fleet was approximately 28.8 joules per tariff as of uh, December 31st. So that's good there also. Uh, there was something else here that I saw that was kind of interesting here. They okay, expand the active Bitcoin mining fleet to approximately six exahash. hash. That's their strategic priorities for 2024. It would be basically uh, double from where they are right now. So that would be a good sign as well. Okay. You guys are more than welcome to read through the rest of the stuff. A lot of the stuff we've, we've already covered in the past. So I'm not going to go over it again. Uh, but this is what we'll get into here on the short side of things. We want to get into actually BitDigital here on this side of things. So BitDigital reported at the end of the year, they had 107.2 million shares outstanding roughly. Uh, market cap for them now with the latest stock price of $2.17 is 232 million. And then you can see here that their performance over the last one, four, eight, and 12 weeks hasn't been that great, but hasn't been great for a lot of miners as well. So we're not too concerned with that right now. Miners have been gone, kind of beaten down a little bit here as we get closer to the having event. Uh, current hash rate there at is 2.7. Future, they're pretty much fully installed right now. They do have some orders, I believe, that they're going to be taking advantage of here shortly. So that'll get them up a little bit. And they've also signed some contracts as well for hosting and things like that. 
Um, so I would expect to see some purchases coming up here. Uh, but we look at all these numbers here during the monthly production updates, so and we're not going to really get into it. If you want to see that video, just search for Bit Deer, or sorry, Bit Digital, in my channel, and you should be able to find it. Here's what we really want to look at is the last four quarters revenue. So we can see that the revenue here has continued to increase over the last four quarters and the current quarter that we're in, which is estimated right now. So that is nice to see, right? We want to see those continued increases in revenue um, because obviously that's well for the shareholders. And then last four quarters operating costs minus depreciation. Those have also increased to 22.1 million from 13.6. That's quite a bit of an increase there. And we'll take a look at why that is here in a second. And it's not something that I'm happy about. But we'll discuss it. Um, going down here, custom mine one Bitcoin minus depreciation came in at twenty three thousand now for Q four. So that's been going up as well, and that's the main reason for that is the Bitcoin network hash rate increasing. That's going to obviously increase the cost to mine a single Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin mine quarterly uh, kind of flat here a little bit. They're up a little bit, but if you look at it overall, it's not a huge increase this year. Four hundred twenty three for the quarter compared to four hundred three on that one, and then debt to equity ratio. That has uh, went quite a bit up here. It's 0.2398. Lower is better, but they're still under one, so that's good. And then current ratio is down to 2.8. Now it was at 29. So they've obviously taken a little bit more liabilities here. And uh, we'll take a look at that down here. Total current assets has increased to 77 million here. And total current liabilities has increased to 27 million. So that's the reason for that uh, big decrease here on this one and the increase on that one as well. That's how that works out for them. Okay, going down here, we'll get into some of these metrics here in a second. What we really want to take a look at is the numbers over here. So I'm going to try and squeeze it in a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, total current assets is 83 million right now. It was 77 million. Or why is it 77 million here? It should be because oh, I'm not including that. Let's see, fixed it. Okay, so 83 million is the current assets right now. Big change here was really the cash and cash equivalents was down about 4 million. Uh, but then we also have the USDC down to 405,000 from 1.5 million. Digital assets increased just a little bit here, about a million. And then other current assets increased to about 18 million from 2.5. And then digital assets held in fund. I got to look into that, what that one is actually about. But that's now 6.1 million. So that's 1283. So about, what is that, 17 million or so in increase from the prior uh, quarter, which is good. And then total current assets, total all total assets is 189 million here. So that's a pretty sizable increase from the 108 that they had here at Q3. So that's good. So that, those things are looking good there. Total current liabilities, big difference here was deferred revenue. 13 million there was added in Q4. Uh, what else do we have here? Other payables and accrued liabilities, that jumped to 9.7 million from 1 million. So that's a sizable increase there as well. And that came up to 27 million here from the 2.2 million that they had here, right? So that's a bigger increase, but they have plenty of assets, not a big deal there. Total liabilities now is at 36.6 million compared to 5.4 million. And big things added in here was other long-term liabilities was now 4.3. Didn't have that before. Uh, or sorry, non-current portion of operating lease liabilities, that's 4.3. Other long-term liabilities is 1.8. And deferred tax liabilities is 112,000. So that's not too bad, but that's obviously jumped up to 36 that million from 5.4 million. Uh, so definitely a sizable increase there. And then total liabilities and stockholder equities now at 189 million compared to 108 million. So that's good there. Revenue here. So revenue came in at 16 million roughly. Uh, total for the year was 44.9. That's obviously a nice increase from the prior quarter that we had 11.6 million roughly. So those are those things are looking good there for them. Expenses, this is where it gets a little, little dicey here. So cost of revenue minus uh, cost of revenue exclusive of depreciation and amortization shown below. Uh, so that was 9.9 .9, uh, million there. So not a huge increase, uh, about what, 1.2 million or so, 1.1 million, an increase on that one. So that's not too bad. Depreciation amortization is fine, 3.4 million. It's actually below where it was the uh, prior quarter. General administrative expenses, this is a big one. 12.2 uh, million here compared to the 4.8 million that they had here in Q3. That's basically, uh, you could almost say 3x, it's 2.5x or something like that. 2.6 or whatever you want to call it. But that's definitely a huge increase there. End of the quarter, obviously, for them, for the fiscal year, they're going to dump a bunch of bonuses, share-based compensation, all that gets dumped into it, and it obviously makes the quarter look a, a little bit worse than it probably should be. Um, I wish they would spread that stuff out over the four quarters instead of dumping everything in the fourth quarter. Uh, for everybody, that is, uh, not just them. Because then it makes it look, look a bit better. Uh, plus, 
when I use the numbers here for some of the other metrics that I use, I'll be using that number. It's going to give them a little bit more of a negative impact on their numbers. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe I need to use like the average or something like that uh, to figure what that might be. Let me know what you guys think of that, if I should use the average or not. But that's just something I'm thinking about. I may just go with the end of the, re end of the quarter results, and that's kind of what we're going to use. Uh, so cost of revenue came in at 25 million here. Take out depreciation and things like that. It might not be as bad. Uh, it's only 3.3 or 3.4 million there. So that still brings them down to 22.2 million. So that's still more than what they actually mined here. Uh, okay. So that's obviously not good. Realized gain loss. Let's see, that was pretty big here. Exchange on digital assets. So that was 8.5 million here. Big increase from the prior quarter on that one. So that's good. What else do I have here? There was a decrease in impairment of digital assets, only negative 900,000 compared to negative 2.1 million. So that's good. Oh, going down here, let's see, gain from the, that one's up a little bit or down. So that's not too bad still there. Other expense income net. This one was a huge increase here, 2 million from negative, two, uh, negative 30,000 roughly for them. And total other in, expense income net came in at 9.5 positive million compared to negative 1.3 million. So that's good there. Um, Net income before tax was uh, 30000 So they were actually somewhat profitable in the quarter here, it looks like. Uh, and I probably should have done, let's see here. Oh, let me take a look. I forgot to do this on this one, I think. I did. Okay, thirteen. So they were actually at 17000 in the plus side of things. As far as what that's going to translate into shares, uh, probably like 0 0.001 percent, one penny, well, one tenth of a penny, maybe, based on the number of shares that they have. Uh, but for the year, it came in at negative 16 cents, and basically, that loaded shares was 87,000, uh, I'm sorry, 87,534. Okay. So that's the way the kind of things played out this way. If we take out depreciation from that uh, number here, it would actually be at 0 0.01, looks like, potentially, All right, per, per share. And I like to look at that also just to get rid of depreciation in there. Uh, but going back up here to the numbers, we already covered uh, cost of mine, which we talked about, was 23000 for the quarter, 19000 on average for the year, so that's not too bad. Debt to equity, we covered that. Current ratio, we covered that as well. Book to value, uh, that one is $152 million. Price to book ratio, 1.52. Enterprise value was $180 million. EBITDA uh, came in at $3.4 million. And then EV2 beta was 51.9. And then revenue, like I said, was 16 million. And then general administrative compensation was 12 million. So that accounts for 76% of their revenue here is basically paid out to general administrative compensation on that one. That's still really high. I mean, they're 42% here in the prior quarter, which is still high at that point, but it was coming down here the prior quarters, which was nice to see. But then we saw obviously the huge spike in bonuses and, um, share based compensation, all that stuff got added into the fourth quarter and they kind of messed up their numbers here a little bit. But still overall, if you look at the, on the year, there's 61%. That's still really high. Uh, they're definitely paying themselves really well over there, uh, which is unfortunate because I'd like to see those at like 20% or less for a company. And that's maybe as they grow and we see this numbers coming in for the AI things that will increase their revenue, which will then decrease their, uh, uh, percentage of revenue or percentage of general administrative compensation to revenue, right? But if they increase their comp general comp general administrative compensation, we'll see that as well. So hopefully they can get that down below 20%. That's kind of where I'd like to see things. Okay. Other than that, that is basically it. Uh, current price where they are right now, I have in between $4.12 to $6.18. Uh, they're currently $2.17. I do think that they are undervalued, right? Um, even if we look forward to the next 12 months after the having event, uh, with the current numbers that we have for February numbers, uh, having between $2.92 to $4.37, so they're still undervalued based on that in general. Um, so there's still a lot of miners that are undervalued, unfortunately, right now, just because of, I think we're getting close to the having event, everything else that's playing into it, uh, people rotating out of the miners, going into the ETFs, going into microstrategy, going into other stocks. Uh, old coins and maybe Bitcoin itself. Um, but eventually we'll get that rotation back into the miners, I think. Okay, so that is it for that one. Let me know what you guys think. And I got to sneeze really quick. All right, I was able to turn on the mute for that. Hopefully you guys can hear me again. Um, but that is it for Bit Digital. 
let's take a look at the short uh, interest that we do have on the miners right now as of about two weeks ago or so. This is the latest data that I have on them. And that is right over, way in the back here. Where is it at? Shorts. Short, there we go. So we're looking at a couple of things here and I'll go down here to where I have all my data. But we're looking at uh, the shares outstanding right now that's being reported. We're looking at the stock price, market cap, what their previous uh, number of shares uh, shorted at that time, which is about two, four weeks ago. The current number, percentage of float, the float is being calculated over here, which I'm getting the numbers from uh, Yahoo, uh, Finviz, and W Wall Street Journal as well. I'm putting all in here and I'm getting an average. That's kind of what I'm using here uh, because all these guys have like different numbers for the most part, which is kind of strange. Some of them have the same numbers, some of them have different, uh, but just don't know which ones to go to. So we'll take all three, we'll do an average, and that's kind of what I'm using there for that. Then we're getting the percent shortage, uh, amount being shorted and things like that. And then we're putting it all into the actual data up there. And here's all the information that I get. I get this information from the Webull app, desktop app. Um, and that's uh, where I get the information on the short uh, number of sh shares shorted. Okay. So looking at uh, current number of shares shorted, we can see that Marathon has the most, 39 million shares shorted on them. Turbo has 33 million, so they're in number two spot. Riot number three spot with 28.4, almost 28.5 million. Clean Spark number four spot with 24.7. And you got Bit Farms with 23.9 million. So those are kind of like the top five miners being shorted there. But then when we look at the actual percentage of average float shorted, things change a little bit here. Not too much, but they still change. All right, but then you can see the rest of the guys here. I'm not gonna go through them all. Uh, DMG, I don't have any information on them uh, through the Webull app, um, so I don't have anything on that one. Percentage of average floated shares, we can see that TerraWolf is the most shorted here based on the number of float. But then you got Bit Digital with 18.63%, Marathon number three spot with 17 Ride number four spot with 14%, Clean Spark number five spot with 133 and you got Cypher pretty close to that as well with 13% as well. And you got the rest of them going down here as well. Uh, so that's kind of the way things have shaped up. So based on percentage, you can say these are the top five that are being shorted the most here. We're still not in, in too bad of a spot. You know, we don't have a, a real short uh, position like we have seen with other stocks like um, AMC or GameStop, right? Where it was just outrageous number of shorts. Um, so this is actually not too bad. But I think once the miners do start going back up, a lot of these shorts will be capitulating and or, you know, yeah, basically capitulating and buying the positions as needed. But that's going to take a while, I think, still. And then shares shorted value versus market cap. So that's the value of shares shorted here on this chart. And then you can see the market cap right now. Marathon's number one with 5.2 billion, roughly, in market cap. Followed by Clean Spark with 3.4 billion. Then you got Rye with 2.9 billion, roughly. And then you got Cypher here at 1.1. So Cypher's definitely come up here recently. It's had a pretty nice run up here in the last, oh, what is it, a couple days now? It's uh, after it reported its earnings. So it's been doing pretty good there. And that's how everybody else here kind of shows up. And DMG, like I said, I don't have any data on DMG right now. Now, looking at the number of shares shorted change from last time. So we're basically looking out what was it four weeks ago and what it is now. We can see here that Core obviously had the most uh, shares increase in shorted, 4 million added to them in short. Bit Digital with 3.2, Moss with 290, CleanSpark with 289. And then you got Argo at 90 and Digihost. Big ones that. Uh, actually have less shares shorted now than four weeks ago. Marathon's less, 7 million. Riot with uh, 6.8 million less. Bit Farms with 6 million as well. Terrible 5.5. And you got Hive with 3 million less shares being shorted from a month ago. So it seems like the shorts are coming down a little bit here. I um, mean, you see a lot of these guys actually getting less shorted than they were just a month ago. So that might be a good sign for us, right? We'll see how that plays out. And then just looking at it really quick here, price uh, change percentage from four weeks ago on the miners. So we're just looking at whether the price of the miners was four weeks ago and where it is now. And then kind of co does it coincide with what we're seeing here as far as the uh, shorts being changed? And not really. I mean, you would think that, um, you know, some of these guys that have a decrease in shores, shorts would see an increase in price, but we're not seeing that right now. You can see your bit deer actually is the only one that's up 15% from four weeks ago, roughly. And they are actually, I mean, they're, number of shares change shorted was only down 238,000. So it's not like that's having a really impact on anything here. Um, I mean, it's core, bit digital. Let's see, core is only down 8% from four weeks ago. So that's not a big change there. Bit digital also, let's see, where's bit digital? Right there, down 28%. But a lot of these guys are down 29, 28, 30%, something like that uh, from four weeks ago right now. Okay, so not really much there to talk about on, on that stuff. And then when we look at the individual 
stocks here and see how they've been, um, how that short interest or sh share shorted over the last, I guess you could say almost eight months now, I guess we're going back to June 14th of last year here. You can see that kind of how that has played out. They looks like they had more shares, Argo at least had more shares shorted last year in June than they do now with 0.29 million, so 290,000 roughly. Yeah, bit dear with barely anything. They're getting more shorted here, but they've also come down a little bit here since 1229. That's where they kind of peaked. And you got bit digital as well here, 9.2 to start out with. They're at 16 million here. It's come down from one point uh, from 112 of this year, uh, down to 11.69 million in two, and was at February 15th. And then at the end of the month of February, it's gone back up here to 16 million. So that's interesting to see there. Bit farms, uh, huge short interest increase here for them throughout the year. Uh, peaked in end of January here with 29.9 million shares, but it's been coming down here. So that's also nice to see there. You had Cypher. Cypher has been kind of, I mean, except for beginning of the uh, Jan June time frame last year. Toward as now, it's only increased by about, what, three, maybe four million shares. So that's not a huge increase there on them. Uh, Clean Spark here. Has been kind of a roller coaster ride a little bit up and down. Uh, it's basically when did it peak? It peaked. Well, it looks like it's peaked at the end of February now. It seems like there's a lot of short interest. Obviously, they've done a lot better than some of the miners as far as uh, percentage gains here in the last couple of weeks. I think that might be the reason why for it, why their short interest is so much higher potentially. And then you got Core here. Core, we just started tracking again here recently, and that's been going up here as well. Digihost, you can see how that all looks right now. DMG, obviously, don't have any information on them. Hive, also not a lot of short shares shorted on them. Hut 8, this was before the merger. This is after the merger here. Um, and that's pretty flat. I mean, if you look at over the last, what is it, six months or so, it's about 8.7 million or so share shorts. So not a lot of not a lot of peaks and valleys there. Iris, also not a lot of shares shorted with Iris on them. Uh, Marathon, obviously... The roller coaster ride as well. Uh, they peaked at 53.97 million. This was in uh, uh, November 15th. And they've been actually coming down here to 39.61 million. So definitely a sizable decrease on them. Going forward, and out actually with, Mar with Marathon, the way that they've been performing recently, um, I would have thought that those short interests or a short number of shares shorted would be going up because of their production issues. But we're not seeing that, um, at least not through the end of February. And we'll see if that increases here as we get into March. Once we have that data in Mawson, obviously you can see that as well. Riot, same thing, kind of peaked here, it looks like in November 15th with 38 million. They're down to 28, so about 10 million less, roughly in that time span. Sphere, 3D, TerraWolf also. TerraWolf has been increasing the number of uh, shares shorted here. Peaked in uh, end of January with 38.95 million. And then that's coming down a little bit here and it's gone back up. I think TerraWolf, the main reason why it's being shorted maybe is because of the debt that they have. That's the only thing I can think of on them. You can see Stronghold here, and that's it. That's everything that we got. So it's always nice to take a look at, see what things are getting shorted and by how much and if it's increasing or decreasing. But yeah, that's kind of where we got to go with right now. We'll see how things play out. Like I said, we got basically, what, 30 days left to go before everything's said and done. Uh, but we'll see where things go. In the meantime... My little sales pitch, uh, you can get access to my spreadsheets and everything that I do through Patreon. That's still $8 a month there. There might be some spots open that are $5 and $4. And if you pay the annual uh, fee on it, you get 10% discount on it as well. And then you also get access to the Discord, private Discord server that we use for communication, chat, um, you know, questions, things like that. That's all in there uh, as well. Okay, so that's my only sales pitch on that one. And then we'll see what happens later on. Um, this week we have a couple more companies reporting their financial results i think terrell is reporting tomorrow i believe uh hot a is reporting next week i think uh, and we're still missing a couple here if i look at my numbers here really quick i'll show you guys which ones i'm still missing here and if you guys have seen any of them provide that information let me know but i'm still missing based on what i'm having here uh i'm missing hut eight is one i'm missing digihost argo Mawson, Terrell is supposed to report tomorrow, and then Bitdeer as well. And that's basically, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six that are still missing. Once we get all those numbers in, then we'll start getting into the quarterly uh, metrics on the miners, see which ones have done the best, which ones have done the worst over the quarter, uh, and then quarter over quarter as well to see how those have all played out. Okay, 
But that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, it helps me out tremendously. Like I said, uh, oh, tomorrow, I'm going to be joining a Bitcoin mining stock guy on Twitter space tomorrow with, um, I think it's Luxor Mining, uh, to talk about Bitcoin miners as well. We're going to talk about what is the future for them, basically, at that point. So you're welcome to join that. I think that's starting at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time tomorrow. Okay? But that's it. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one.